Hello everyone, it's Simon here and I'd like to welcome you to this session on Google Trends. So this session is all about understanding a little known but really useful Google service called Google Trends. We're going to have a look at the product and understand how to use it. We're going to make sure that everyone's clear about why this is important for us when we're running our businesses or community projects. And finally, we're going to have a walk through the uh, product and uh, explore some of the features and make sure that everyone's comfortable with using it. Now, just to set the scene here, about 88% of search volume globally is owned by Google. So how does search relate to trends? Well, it's really straightforward. If we assume that people search for things that they're interested in, then if we can aggregate that search data, then we start to get a really fascinating insight into things that are popular, um, both domestically and around the world, and how the popularity of those things changes over time. Fortunately, Google's made a really simple tool uh, to help us do this, and that tool is, as you've guessed, Google Trends. So what is Google Trends? Well, really simply, it's a tool that enables us to investigate Google's database of global search traffic. Now, there are two main things that it can do for us. Firstly, uh, and that's that it can identify what's trending right now or over a specified period of time. Uh, the second thing it can do for us, and this is the thing that we're most interested in, is that it can give us a visual representation of the popularity of a search phrase over time, as you can see on the screen there. So why is this important? Well, every year, hundreds of thousands of new products and services are launched in the UK and around the world. Many of these are going to fail, and one important determinant of that failure may be that those involved have not significantly focused on approaching change. Uh, now, trend spotting is a tool that helps organisations and individuals discover how industries, technology, consumer interests and more are going to change over the coming years. And if you and your role can you know, anticipate that change, then you've got a much better chance of succeeding. Okay, so now we've got that out of the way, let's jump in and have a look at the product. Okay, so here we are on the Google Trends homepage. You can find this at google.com slash trends. Okay, so on the homepage here, you can see that across the top, we've got featured stories here. And so we can, um, this is showing us for all categories, and then at the moment it's using the United States. So I'm based in the UK at the moment, so I might just toggle that to give me a better idea about what's happening around me right now. Paris Fashion Week and the Rugby World Cup, well, I'd say that's pretty spot on. Now, if we scroll down, uh, we can see other trending stories around this country at the moment. Lots and lots of sport-related stories there. But uh, this is a pretty sports-mad country, so again, no surprises. Now to access the uh, other parts of the Google Trends service, simply just head up to the menu in the top left corner. Now here we can see we've got Home, Explore, that's what we're going to be looking at in a moment. We've got Trending Searches, Trending on YouTube. Now let's have a quick look at Top Charts. Now you can see here that it's got a list of charts around different subject areas. So female celebrity, male celebrity, cake recipes, uh, news stories, TV shows, um, who doesn't love Peppa Pig, uh, and that kind of thing. And so it's showing us for the UK for the year of 2014. But again, you can toggle this to be global. Uh, you can change this, look back in time. So in 2006, uh, we were most fascinated with the death of Aaron Spelling, it seems. In the news in that year, Paris Hilton, Orlando Bloom, and cancer were our top three things, which, uh, wow, it's kind of crazy. Okay, so as I mentioned, so one of the things that this service can do is to give you an insight in what's current right now and also what has been current in the past. And so, again, you access this through the top charts, uh, you know, through the trending searches at the moment, looking on the homepage. The second thing, as I mentioned, is that we can actually start looking at the performance of a particular search phrase over time, and that's what we can do in Explore. Okay, so the easiest way to demonstrate this part of the service is going to be by working through an example. Okay, you can see that the service is prompting us to um, enter a search topic. And so I've done a number of work with students and graduates looking to start food businesses in recent years. And so um, I've got a bit of expertise in that area. And so let's um, work through an example using some different food related searches. Okay, so the first phrase we'll use is raw food. 
So one of the businesses I was working with, they really wanted to launch a range of raw food, uh, raw food desserts. And so let's have a look what the market for that might be like. Okay, so before we look at the graph, let's look along the top of the screen. And so at the moment we're looking at worldwide interest uh, from 2004 to present across all categories. And we're looking at web search rather than image or news search. So that's exactly what we want. And so looking at the chart, we can see that you know it's trending upwards over time. And so this could indicate uh, a growing market for this style of food. Now, if we were exploring this market or this industry uh, for our own business and we knew that we were going to be based in the UK, we may well want to limit uh, the results of this search to that region. And so we just do this up here under worldwide. Let's scroll down to United Kingdom and there. And so while well, it's giving us a much different picture now, you can see that you know, it really is significantly trending upwards over the last two to three years. Now if we scroll down the page a little more, we can start to uh, look at the, uh, the different regional areas that that interest is coming, on, coming from. So firstly we can see that you know, the most interest is in England, followed by Wales and Scotland, both sort of pretty equal, they are identical, and then Northern Ireland in third. Now we can actually unpack that even further and choose to have a look at the uh, interest by, or the source of the interest by either town or city. And we can see there that Brighton you know, is the most, uh, I guess, uh, the region in the UK in which the most interest is coming from. And so it's important to note here that this isn't telling us that the most number of searches are coming from Brighton, but proportionally compared to the total number of searches coming from Brighton, that this is the highest. And finally, if we scroll down further, then it suggests some related searches. So other kind of queries that are often made with uh, alongside raw food, such as raw diet, raw food diet, eat raw, raw recipes, etc. Okay, well let's um, add some other phrases to this and see what that looks like. Another diet or style of eating which is really uh, popular at the moment is uh, paleo, or uh, the, a diet that mimics the style of the Paleolithic man. There we go, Paleolithic diet. Okay, looking at the graph now, we can start to see that you know, this is something which has really been exploding lately. So I'm not sure if you've seen it in the press, but it has been pretty topical. But um, you know, the search data here tells us that you know, this style of eating, this paleo style of eating, is really, really on trend at the moment. And so you can see you know, from back here in 2011, it really has exploded to the levels where it's at today. Another inference we can make from the shape of that graph is that it's really seasonal. So you've got these spikes here, January, January, and January. And so there are no surprises there, really. People are coming out of the Christmas period, feeling disgusting, feeling overweight, probably like they need to kind of take a break, uh, start looking after their body after the uh, excesses of the Christmas period, and they are looking for quick fixes in the form of a diet to do that. Now, again, if we scroll down, we can look at the regional uh, interest for the paleo diet. So you just click on the tab there, click on the words, and you'll see sort of where how that changes. And so all of a sudden, we can see that Northern Ireland is much more interested in paleo than it was in raw food. Okay, so let's add another phrase to that. Let's try gluten-free. Okay, so we can see here now that again, gluten-free is something which in the last four years has become much, much more popular. Um, a lot more people are talking about gluten-free. They're obviously searching for information around gluten-free. What we can see from this graph then is that um, you know, whilst paleo and raw food are popular, there are many more people searching for gluten-free. Um, the other thing that we can see is that it doesn't appear to be as seasonal as perhaps the paleo diet. So let's add one more phrase. Veganism. Okay, you can see here that veganism is really, really consistent again until around sort of 2012 when it suddenly starts sort of trending upwards. But the most surprising thing here is I think is in that last, you know, since June 2015, it really has spiked. You know, many more people are starting to think about, obviously to start to think about this as a, a diet to pursue. Now, I mean, in isolation, we can sort of scratch our heads a bit and ask, well, you know, why has that spike like that? So sometimes Google uh, attempts to explain these spikes by using this feature here called news headlines. And so if you tick this, well, then it will add in 
um, links to various kind of happenings in the media. Uh, if you come down from the top and then kind of move on to the letter, it should tell us. Okay, France tucks into its first gluten-free eclairs. Delicious. Uh, what about F? Gluten-free labeling standards kick in. Look, um, to be honest, I mean, most of these, um, I mean, we're looking at the UK market here, and most of these news um, events are outside of the UK, and so I'd say in this instance, it doesn't appear to be that relevant for us. Okay, let's try adding one more search phrase. Vegetarianism. Okay, we can see from that as well that, you know, given these regular spikes, again, in sort of January, December, January, December and January, that, again, it's pretty seasonal, yeah? So probably off the back of the Christmas period, people are looking to eat like that. Again, we can see it's been gradually trending uphill, um, you know, since 2009. So, I mean, some of the inferences we can draw from this that people are becoming much more aware about the type of food they're eating, um, you know, minimizing the impact they're having on the planet maybe by eating kind of vegetable-based foods uh, and that kind of thing. So I guess in summary with this, with this product, I'd say just jump in and have a play with it, yeah? Uh, you can't break it um, and you'll you know, start to get an idea of how it works really quickly once you start using it. Okay, I think that's all I wanted to show you in connection with Google Trends. It's really simple to use, really straightforward. You've got the basics now. I think the best thing is uh, to just to jump on and to start having a play with the service in the context of your own ideas. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye.